Welcome to Transformed by Grace, an in-depth Bible study of God's Word, presented by the Berean Bible Society. Join us each time on this station as Pastor Kevin brings the transforming message of God's grace revealed through the Holy Scriptures. Zacharias tells about Charlie Peace, a criminal in England who on the day he was being taken to his execution listened to a minister reading from the Word of God. And when he realized he was reading about heaven and hell, he looked at the preacher and said these words, Sir, if I believed what you and your church says, even if England were covered with broken glass from coast to coast, I would walk over it on hands and knees and think it worthwhile living just to save one soul from an eternal hell like that. Eternal hell is real and it exists. God is not willing that any should perish, but instead that all might be saved through trusting His Son and His provision on their behalf. God has sent us, His church, His ambassadors into this world to make the good news of His grace known, being motivated by Christ's love and burdened by the great need of the unbelieving that they would be saved from their sins and from hell. Helen Keller is reported to have said, to be blind is bad, but it is worse to have eyes and not see. We who have trusted Christ have had our spiritual eyes opened at salvation, but we must be careful to not see the spiritual need of others who need to be saved from an eternity in the lake of fire. We are each called to do the work of an evangelist, being sensitive to the great danger people are in at all times. We have the one thing that is able to save them from the torments and eternal death of hell, the gospel of the grace of God. Because of the desperate need of people to be saved from their sins, the church is commissioned by the Lord to take the gospel to all people to the ends of the earth. But for the church to be the brightest light it can be, It is vitally important that we do so in light of Christ's commission for today for the church, the body of Christ. There is more than one commission in God's Word. We must rightly divide the commission so we know which commission is ours so we might most effectively take the saving message of Christ to this world. In this episode, we're going to look at the commission Christ committed to His apostles and to the nation of Israel. Next week, we'll look at the commission Christ has committed to the body of Christ. The dictionary defines commission as the act of committing, an authoritative order, a charge or direction, authority granted for a particular action or function to send on a mission, a command to act in a prescribed manner or to perform prescribed acts. In a spiritual, biblical sense, a commission is the Lord Jesus Christ charging and sending forth His followers with authority to proclaim a message of truth concerning Himself. Nowhere in your Bible does it say Great Commission. The term Great Commission has been used to describe the parting instructions of the Lord to His disciples before ascending back to heaven. The title Great Commission has so long been called this and so long been accepted as the commission for the church today that its validity for today is never, ever questioned. But as Bereans, we should question things to make sure that they are the truth, that they line up with the teaching of God's Word and His will for us today under grace. As our Lord warned in His earthly ministry, we are to be careful about traditions which make the Word of God of none effect. There are five scripture references in regard to the commission Christ gave to His apostles prior to His ascension. Matthew 28, 18 to 20, Mark 16, 15 through 18, Luke 24, 45 to 48, John 20, 21 to 23, and Acts 1, 8 and 9. One major problem and big problem is that the whole commission isn't taken into account. These are not five separate commissions. This is one commission explained in five references. Oftentimes what you'll find is that denominations, churches, Bible preachers, and teachers 
choose one of these scripture references over and above the other references. Matthew's account of the Lord's commission to the disciples is the one that's most often used. Many choose which commission they like out of the four Gospels in the book of Acts and they follow it, but they don't consider all of them together. Many others with the commissions will simply pick and choose which parts they like out of all of them. So oftentimes you'll hear preachers speak on and expound on go, and lo, I am with you always, and on Mark's all the world, and every creature, and Luke's ye are witnesses, and Acts ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. But rarely is the whole commission taught together. And to those who go beyond the picked phrases to examine the record in its entirety, the acceptance of the Great Commission as truth for the church today presents many great difficulties. So we should ask the question, what is the overall content of the commission? The five separate references are all accounts of the same commission for his apostles given by Christ after his resurrection and before his ascension. And like the Gospels often do with the Lord's miracles and teachings, each of the Gospels give different angles, and they fill in different parts and give different truths about the same event or same teaching. And you have to put them together to get the whole story. And as we put all parts of the commission together, we read this. Matthew 28, 18 to 20 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Mark 16, 15 through 18 says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they shall drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Luke 24, 45 to 48, Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the Scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. John 20, 21 to 23, Then said Jesus to them, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosesoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosesoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Acts 1, 8 and 9, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. First, we observe that the Lord Jesus Christ is the basis and the foundation of this commission. Christ says, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Christ is the one with authority from the Father who commissions and gives the charge as Israel's Messiah and her King, and He commands and prescribes things to be carried out. He sends the eleven on the mission, grants them authority in carrying it out. This commission was given to the eleven apostles. It is the apostles' commission. It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them in Matthew 28. He said unto them, Mark 16 says, the them is the 11 apostles. This commission was given to the apostles of the kingdom, not to the church, the body of Christ. The apostles had already been commissioned and sent out earlier by the Lord with the following command 
in Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 through 6, when he said, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The ministry of the apostles was to the nation of Israel. God's plan back then was for Israel to be a light and a blessing to all the earth, for people to be saved through Israel and through God's covenants made with her. This is what is crucial to note, that this commission was given under a program which involves the nation of Israel under the law who had an earthly kingdom hope. And we are not the nation of Israel. We are the church, the body of Christ. We are not under the law. We are under grace. We don't have an earthly hope. We have a heavenly hope. This commission is for the apostles of the earthly kingdom under the law and God's program with the nation of Israel. It is not for us, the Gentiles, the people of the nations and members of the church, the body of Christ, under grace. All the world was in view under God's program with Israel. God has always loved the whole world. That's why John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. Under Israel's program, the Lord spoke through the prophet Isaiah and said, Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Under God's prophetic program with the nation Israel, God's plan was for every nation of the world to be blessed through Israel and her rise. And her rise would take place through her Messiah and King and through the establishment of Israel's kingdom on the earth. Because of God's love for the world, Christ told the disciples to go to teach all nations in Matthew 28, to go ye into all the world in Mark 16, and to preach in Christ's name among all nations in Luke 24, to be witnesses for Christ unto the uttermost part of the earth in Acts chapter 1. But in doing so, you have to notice that the Lord told them where they were to begin their ministry, at Jerusalem. Luke 24, 47 says, beginning at Jerusalem. According to Acts 1, 8, they were to be witnesses of Christ in the order of in Jerusalem, and then in all Judea and all the area around it, and then Samaria, and then unto the uttermost part of the earth. The reason for this order was that Jerusalem was of chief and of utmost importance to Israel's kingdom program. Jerusalem was to be the center, the glorious capital of the earthly kingdom of Christ, where Christ will rule and reign as king over all the earth. Therefore, Jerusalem needed to be reached first. Then they were to go to Judea and an area all around Jerusalem. Then to Samaria to the north. Then to the uttermost part of the world. This commission had a worldwide scope and outreach but it was for Israel to be a channel of blessing to the rest of the world. And so Israel and Jerusalem needed to be reached first for them to be a light to the rest of the world. The apostles could not make disciples of all nations if God's chosen nation did not first repent and turn to Christ their Messiah. The salvation of the Gentiles, the nations, according to this program, came through Israel and her rise and so Israel needed to be reached first. We'll be returning to the program in just a minute. But first, we'd like to take this time to thank you, our partners, for making these programs possible. If you would like to access our library of helpful Bible study tools, go to BereanBibleSociety.org. Two Great Commissions is a 28-page booklet written by Pastor Kevin J. Sadler first appearing as articles in the October and November 2016 issues of the Berean Searchlight. This booklet presents the stark contrast between the Lord's commission to the Twelve Apostles and His commission to the Apostle Paul for the dispensation of grace in which we live. In this work, Pastor Kevin Sadler shows from Scripture how we are commissioned to rescue the perishing by sharing the gospel of grace and to shed light on the truth of God's revelation of the mystery. To order your copy, Contact the Berean Bible Society for pricing and availability at 262-255-4750. That's 262-255-4750. Or visit our website at 
www.bereanbiblesociety.org. To receive our free full-color 32-page monthly magazine, The Berean Searchlight, call 262-255-4750 or subscribe online at www.bereanbiblesociety.org. Thank you again for your generous gifts. And now, back to the teaching with Pastor Kevin. This commission also instructed the disciples to teach all nations, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, the Lord said in Matthew 28. So when he says that, that includes all the instruction by Christ found in the Gospels to the disciples concerning the kingdom on the earth and concerning Israel living through the tribulation period. Therefore, it would have included the Lord's instructions to love your enemies, to love your neighbor as yourself, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And it would have included the need to be a humble servant like Christ. He that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Under this commission, they would need to teach others to pray after the manner of the Lord's Prayer. They would have taught conditional forgiveness. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. They would have taught the need to seek ye first the kingdom of God, sell all that ye have, and give alms. They would have taught, and if thou wilt be perfect, sell all that thou hast and give to the poor. The apostles would have taught a faith plus works gospel. They would have taught everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. They would have required adherence to the law of Moses as the Lord taught the apostles when he said the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All, therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. Christ lived, ministered, and kept the law of Moses perfectly. In Matthew 5, 17, Christ said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ lived by the law. He taught the disciples to observe the law and its Sabbath observances, its sacrifices, its taxes, its commandments, its ceremonies and feast days. So the apostles were to go to Israel and then go to everywhere teaching, making disciples out of all of Christ's earthly kingdom teachings and the law of Moses and to set the example themselves. This commission also instructed them to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every person. What gospel? The apostles didn't need to ask because they knew only one, the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel that they were to preach in accordance with this commission was the good news of the kingdom and the establishment of a glorious kingdom on the earth. And that gospel they preached required repentance, confession of sins, water baptism, and belief in Jesus as Israel's Messiah for the remission of their sins. When Luke 24, 45 to 46 says that the Lord opened the disciples' understanding and he showed them from Scripture how the Messiah was to suffer and to rise again. He wasn't requiring belief in his death and resurrection for the forgiveness of sins, but instead that his death and his resurrection showed them beyond a doubt that he was Israel's Messiah, the one who would reign from David's throne over all the earth in the kingdom on the earth. Faith in his name that Jesus is Israel's Messiah is what they are required to believe under the terms of the kingdom gospel. Not that Christ died for their sins and rose again, like we trust in with the gospel of the grace of God. The reason they had to believe in Jesus as the Messiah and why this was part of this gospel 
is because when the gospel of the kingdom is proclaimed in the future during the tribulation period, the Antichrist will be alive. The Antichrist will be at work. With deceptive and miraculous signs and wonders, the Antichrist will declare that he is the Messiah, that he is God in flesh. And people in that day, in that future day, will need to trust the word of God and what the Gospels teach about Christ and believe in the true Christ in order to be saved under the terms of the Gospel of the Kingdom. And the Gospel of the Kingdom required water baptism. This was not an optional ceremony under this commission. Within the kingdom on the earth, the nation of Israel will be a kingdom of priests. And the law required priests to be washed with water. Israel's water baptism was a ceremonial cleansing which identified them with their national priesthood as a kingdom of priests in the kingdom on the earth. They were commissioned with authority, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And Mark says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Water baptism was required for the forgiveness of sins. Like Peter was teaching on the day of Pentecost in accordance with the gospel of the kingdom, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Also in accordance with this commission, miraculous signs were to follow those who believed the gospel of the kingdom, the Lord said. Water baptism was a requirement for salvation and miraculous signs were the evidences of salvation under the gospel of the kingdom. The miraculous demonstrations of our Lord's earthly ministry and of the commission to the eleven, as they were done in Christ's name and power, they all confirmed the Messiahship of the Lord Jesus Christ. And these things helped them spread the commission and the dangers and obstacles they might have faced at that time and going to all the world. And these miraculous wonders will take place in the future tribulation period when this commission is once again in force because in that day they will face great dangers. There are practical reasons for these signs. There will be many sick from the pestilences of that day that will need to be healed. By tongues, Israel will be able to take the gospel of the kingdom to the nations without learning their language. If they are bitten by a serpent or drink any deadly thing as they travel and spread the gospel of the kingdom or as they hide in the wilderness from the Antichrist, it won't harm them. Demon possession will again take place in great numbers in the tribulation and they'll be able to cast out devils in that day. As Christ's representatives, the disciples were sent and given divine authority to forgive or to retain sin. Now only God can forgive sin. Isaiah 43, 25 says, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember thy sins. But when Christ breathed on them and gave the Holy Spirit to the disciples, they were enabled by the Lord to carry out this part of their commission supernaturally. It became the divine work of the Holy Spirit through the disciples that they were able to forgive sins as they carried this part of the commission out. The Lord said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that the disciples would receive power after the Holy Spirit came. And the Holy Spirit did come in fulfillment of prophecy on the day of Pentecost. And it was by the Holy Spirit's power that the apostles carried out this commission and were witnesses of Christ's resurrection. All these things agree with what the apostles actually did as recorded in the book of Acts after the Lord ascended to heaven. The story is told of a woman driving through the mountains west of Denver when she ran into a snowstorm. She was completely lost and then peered ahead and saw a snowplow in front of her. She decided to follow it and kept as close to the plow as she could while it removed snow from the road. At times the blowing snow cut off her view, but her faithful guide kept on leading the way. After some time, the plow stopped 
and its driver got out and walked over to her car and asked, Lady, where are you going? She said, I'm on my way to Denver. And he said, well, you'll never get there following me. I'm plowing a parking lot. People are following the wrong commission today. They're going in circles in a blinding snowstorm of confusion, and the church is not moving forward as a result. Many of these things have been misapplied by sincere believers in churches. Following the wrong commission has led to snake handling in churches. It leads to healing movements. It leads to church leaders believing they have the authority to forgive sins. People thinking that they are speaking in tongues. As a result, many are trying to live by the law and the Ten Commandments. Churches recite the Lord's Prayer. Preachers proclaim conditional forgiveness, faith plus works, gospel from the gospel records, and not the gospel of pure grace by faith alone. It leads to people trusting in water baptism to save them. Teachers and preachers often spiritualize the commission and make Jerusalem your hometown, Judea your county, and, and so on. And the simple answer to all the confusion is 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God's word needs to be rightly divided. This commission is for the nation of Israel, and we are not Israel. God has changed his dealings with mankind. Please join us next time, and we'll look at Christ's commission for the church, the body of Christ, under grace. The Key to Understanding the Scriptures is a fold-out chart written by Pastor Paul M. Sadler. While the entire Bible is for us, it was not all written to us, nor is it all about us. We must rightly divide the Word of Truth. This fold-out chart is a handy way to introduce someone to the Word, rightly divided. Although the character of God never changes, He does change His dealings with mankind from time to time as the chart clearly depicts. Packages of 25 are also available at a discounted rate. To order your copy, contact the Berean Bible Society for pricing and availability at 262-255-4750 or visit our website at www.bereanbiblesociety.org. Thank you again for tuning in to Transformed by Grace. We appreciate your prayer support and the financial gifts. The purpose and mission of the Berean Bible Society is to help you understand the whole counsel of the Word of God. For more information, visit our website at www.bereanbiblesociety.org or give us a call at 262-255-4750. Or if you prefer, write us at the Berean Bible Society. P.O. Box 756, Germantown, Wisconsin, 53022. Now until next time, may you be transformed by God's grace.